What's going on, guys? Welcome to Barking for Balance, the podcast where we talk about dogs, but really we talk about all sorts of topics that are meant to teach, inspire, and entertain. For those of you guys that don't know who I am, I'm Sicilian, so we speak Sicilian on this podcast. I told you it's not just about dogs. It's about all sorts of cool stuff. But uh, I am Pat the Pac-Man, and I am a dog behavior and rehabilitation specialist for Pac-Man to the Rescue, Canine Solutions and Coaching. So welcome to the podcast and welcome for all the newbies. And this is going to be fun. You're going to have a lot of laughs. No, we're not going to drink and laugh, but we're just going to laugh. Well, maybe one day we'll do a little uh, cups and pups segment. Um, It's coming. It's coming. A little cups and pups. We got to figure out what we're going to put in those cups first, but we'll get there anyway. So uh, for those guys that don't know me, like I said, my name is Pat the Pac-Man and uh, my passion is on uh, training people about dog psychology and teaching people about how to communicate dog language. So I do not train dogs. I do not believe in dog training tactics except to train dogs how to perform tricks. If you want a dog that's happy, fulfilled and well-behaved, that should be your goal as a responsible dog owner. And that's what you're going to learn from us. And that's where you're going to learn on this podcast, along with being inspired and entertained at the same time. So uh, being that uh, the 4th of July is actually coming soon, I, I wanted to talk about um, fireworks. I wanted to not, not almost a spot or yoko de folk, no, not, not how to shoot fireworks, but basically how to deal with dogs. Um, they're a little afraid of uh, fireworks and that's a big deal on a 4th of July. A lot of dogs run away on the 4th of July due to the fireworks. And so I wanna talk about how to deal with the fireworks. I wanna talk about also about fear in general. Um, Fear is something that has plagued me for a big chunk of my life, and I'll get to that in a second. But uh, how to deal with dogs that are fearful, and I really mean really, you could even apply this for for human purposes to a certain extent. Uh, you know, you could draw from from my own personal experiences and and, and learn from that. And um, you know, so those are like some of the main topics I want to talk about. But before I get into those, I want to make sure you guys uh, subscribe to uh, the podcast. You could listen to the podcast on all major pod- podcast platforms. Uh, Google Podcast, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Amazon Podcast. And if you want to look at this beautiful face, you could also listen and watch to uh, the podcast on uh, our YouTube channel, which is uh, Pac-Man to the Rescue, P-A-C-K-M-A-N to the Rescue. And on the YouTube channel, you'll also be able to get a bunch of uh, cool, uh, to see a bunch of cool videos and instructional videos and uh, of course, you get to see the beautiful face of mine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so so yeah, so and as far as like the podcast, like I said, all the major po- platforms, you can listen to them anywhere. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss out on Barking for Balance. Barking for Balance is the podcast, guys. We train people, not dogs. We train people, not dogs. That's right. That's what it's supposed to be about. Training people, not dogs. So make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss out. Anyway, see, it's going to be entertaining. I'm a freaking clown, guys. I'm fun. I'm inspirational. I'm everything. I'm like, I'm like a jack of all trades, not a jackass, although some people think that, but that's besides the point. Anyhow, so let's talk about fireworks. Let's talk about fear. So before we get into the fear, I want to talk about the fireworks again with 4th of July coming. You know, I'm going to go into a couple of things that to me, for me, they're common sense. Um, but as I always say in America, common sense is a foreign language. So we got to get into it. Um, obviously, simple shit. Um, again, <laughs> I mean, listen, whatever. Let me let me not go down those roads because I said, no, I shot up be good at And then I'll go into a tangent of just like going crazy and screaming and hollering. And let's avoid all that. Let's try to be nice. Let's try to be calm. Let's try to be gentle. Ah, okay. So as far as uh, fireworks, common sense stuff, you know, your dog, you'll know, you should know, hopefully you should know if your dog is afraid of fireworks, if your dog is uncomfortable around fireworks. So common sense, number one, put a goddamn collar with some tags on your dog. Obviously, before even that, you should have your dog microchip because if the collar breaks off and the, t- or the tags aren't on anymore, the microchip is, is your main backup plan, is your main plan, actually, it's plan A, and then the collar with the tags is plan B. But put some tags on your dog. Even if you don't put collar a collar on, for the 4th of July, put a damn thing on. Okay. Second of all, 
I'm not a big fan of just letting your dog just roam around to go to the bathroom. You know, depending on the circumstances, you should be involved in every aspect of your dog's life. But I do understand people let their dogs out into the backyard. Fine. Here's the thing, guys. Your dog's, you know, your yard's fenced in, all this kind of stuff, six foot, never got out before, blah, 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 blah. We're going to know how it's going to end. There's going to be the one time break through the gate. You forgot to lock it. Some dogs can jump high and you don't even realize it. Miki see, especially when they're afraid they're going to jump. They're going to get out of the gate, out of the fence, off the fence. Make sure you're out there supervising. Okay. At least this one day a year. One day a year, just supervise, just be out there, watch, make sure nothing happens. You know, if you really want to be smart about it, put them on a leash, you know, just, just be, be, be practical about it. You know, there's tons of dogs that, that are constantly running out. That's the problem. Um, fear takes over. They take off. Never done it before. I hear that shit all the time. He's never done this before. She's never done that before. Bop, bop, bop. Great. All it takes is one time. You know what I'm saying? So once a year, don't be lazy. Be smart. Common sense. You know, 4th of July, just, just be out there supervising. Put a leash on. Make sure you have a collar that doesn't break off. If you're out on a walk, you know, again, common sense. Use a slip lead. Use a choke chain. Do not use a harness. Do not use a regular collar. Use something that's going to give you some control. If you, I know, you know, no, go bet you need to but this is going to born. Listen, I'm not saying if you don't want to use those tools permanently, that's fine. But you need something that's going to give you some kind of control. You know what I mean? Keep your your walk short, especially at night. You know, in the afternoon, evening time, because that's where most of the fireworks are going to be fired out off. Uh, although there's going to be some people firing off fire fireworks during the day too, but it's less likely. So um, I'm going to get to that exercising component in, in just a hot second. So just relax. That the guy moves. That the guy Um So yeah, that that that's the thing. Common sense. Walk short walks, bathroom breaks. If you're not, if you're just going to walk them, don't use a regular collar. Those things will pop right off their necks. Break whatever. Choke chain prong collar if you absolutely have to i'm not a big fan of that but if you absolutely have to a slip lead is always my tool of choice that's what i prefer a harness is going to slide right i know it's it, it from the back in the front and listen we're just talking about precaution we're not even getting into like walking and all that kind of stuff i'm just talking about a dog that's going to bolt you put a harness on them they're going to drag you down the street they're going to rip that leash off your hands they're going to pull it off it's going to pop off like a sweater just be be smart you know what i mean just 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 it's a Sicilian saying that literally translates to it's better to say who knows than who knew. And that's the truth. It's better to, to take precautions. If it doesn't happen, great. But at least you don't have to worry about, well, what ifs and if I only and all that kind of crap. Use your brains. You know what I'm saying? Common sense. So just a couple of quick tips when, when it relates to that. Um, I'm not a big fan of, of, of medication. Um, I'm not going to get into that whole topic. If you guys want to discuss medication and get my opinion on it, let me know, write some comments on there and uh, tell me how you, you know, how you feel about it and how you want to discuss it. And if you want to discuss it, but I'm not a big fan of medication, so we'll leave that alone. But again, under these circumstances, if it's necessary, if you have no choice, if it's something that's needed, whatever, you know, we're going to do what we got to do. I'm a fat, good dog. I'm a fat. Eh? Oh, course. oh. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, you know, precautions. I mean, those are just some quick ideas. If you guys have any other tips as far as, far as like what you do um, as preferred precautions, let me know. Would love to add them to my to my repertoire. Uh, I don't have these personal issues when it comes to fireworks. Uh, my dogs don't have. They you know they don't really give a shit. Um, that's because of how I handled it when it comes to the quote unquote fear of it. And we're going to get to that in a second, but um, yeah. So, so just a couple of things, as far as like some tips, um, you know, if, if, if one of the things you could do is you can take your dog um, to a place that's kind of like away from where they can hear the fireworks. Um, you could use a crate. 
um, you know, someplace where they feel safe, that you know they feel safe. Um, you know, you you know what your where your dog is comfortable. Obviously, depending on your on your home situations, it's gonna be hard. But if you have a basement and it's less sound in the basement, you could always do that. So there's some options for 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 those kind of you know to set up like you know some 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 accommodations. Um, when it comes to to the process of dealing with the fireworks, here's the thing. Um, the key, to, in in my personal opinion, and, and there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of of variations to how to deal with this, but the first thing that I would tell you to do right off the bat is make sure your dog is tired. So the first and foremost, first and foremost on your list should, should be to drain the physical and the mental energy hardcore. If you don't want to take your dog out, if you normally don't, because of like also, if you don't take your dog out for walks or to exercise, this is the day to do it. Drain the energy. And I'm not just talking about like play time. I mean, in for one time, maybe in this case, it could work. Daycare, doggy daycare kind of things, dog park, which I'm not a big fan of, but whatever, you know, tons of playing, whatever it is that you could drain energy for just that one specific day before the fireworks even begin. So you make them tired before the fireworks even begin. Take them for take your dog for a nice long ass walk. You know, if you have access to a treadmill, use a treadmill, swimming, a great thing. Um, I'm not a big fan of doing extra excitement driven activities to drain the energy. It doesn't work. It'll work for the day, but it doesn't work overall. But in this particular case, like I said, because it works for the day, that's kind of like all we need. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm, I don't think you should do this, this to begin with. You should be regimented and, you know, do this kind of stuff all the time. But at least for one day, you know, you do something to get that brain, get that body to be just so beat down that you're just going to pass out and they're not even going to notice the fireworks are around. You know what I mean? So that's an option. Um, the key here is, is to understand what's going on in dog's mind when the fireworks take place. And, you know, there, this, this kind of like brings me to the whole fear concept. And I know that this is going to be a very touchy subject for a lot of people that are very some, sensitive to their dog's needs. But if you want to do what's right for your dog, then you got to take yourself out of your own shoes, out of your own head and put yourself into your dog's head. And that's really what this boils down to is how, um, how to deal with fear. You know, how do you deal with a dog that's being afraid? Most people, they go into coochie coochie mode, coddly coddly mode, weak, weak mode. Um, I get it. You know, I mean, I get it because it breaks your heart to see a dog that's fearful. Now, I'm not even getting into details about this whole situation because most dog trainers or most dog lovers are all about fear. Like every single problem is that the dog is afraid, the dog's afraid, the dog's afraid. That's not nothing's necessarily the case. Not every single dog's afraid, guys. You know, it's not always about fear. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of other underlying reasons, but unfortunately, because you know, we got to put a label on it to make people feel guilty and to try to make ourselves look big. So we label it with fear. When it comes to fireworks, it doesn't start off as being fear. It starts off as being unsure. Okay. So what ends up happening is, especially if you're dealing with like a puppy, right? Or, or a dog that's never heard fireworks before. I mean, I don't know where, you know, let's, let's say, let's use a puppy, for example, right? So if you have a puppy, you know that they never heard fireworks before. So what's going to happen is they're going to look to you, to us, to know how to feel about it, right? So when we, when we, when they, when we, when they first hear that sound, it's going to spook like me, and it also happens to us, even if we've heard fireworks before, you know, it just catches us by surprise, catches us by surprise. I mean, I, I, I have a douchebag uh, neighbor, Betsy Shunsu, Kavishini Gaza, Jirasun Tompolun, Kabushimava Fankulu. Oh, yeah, he shoots a fireworks, I don't know, like almost every other, every other week. And they're literally like right here. And it's just, I want to cut his balls off. But, you know, he fires off his fireworks. And it's just this year, I don't know, maybe just bored after the coronavirus situation. I don't know what to tell you, but whatever. 
And sometimes I'm outside walking my dogs and it scares the shit out of me. A little bit, the mantra is full, right? It catches you by surprise. So it happens and your dogs are going to be the same way. They're going to be caught like surprise. Like, oh my God, what the hell was that? Now, the key to that is not to linger on in that state of mind. If you continue to bathe in that fear and that insecurity and in that nervousness, in that tension and that uncertainty, whatever you want to call it, whatever state of mind that, that, that you're in, now your dog is going to continue to bathe in the same state that they were in because they were spooked just as much as you. Now, you got to understand because it's not about the tri- the treats and the tricks. It's not about the sit, stay, lay down crap. And here's the cookie, cookie, cookie. That's that's to teach the tricks. And I, I, we're going to get into this whole topic on another podcast. I know I keep saying this and I will. I'm just, it's just going to light a fire. So, but we're going to get into that soon. But when it comes to, when it comes to understanding the brain of a dog, you know, a dog is going to bathe in, is going to look to you to understand how to feel about a certain situation. So you were spooked, but now you're whatever, you're calm and relaxed. They were spooked. So now they're going to look to you to say, okay, what, what the hell was that mom? What the hell was that dad? How should we feel about it now? Um, I feel, I feel fine. Okay. Dad, dad and mom, they seem okay. They're not, they're not nervous. They're not, they, they started off, but now they're calm. You sure, mom, dad, how should everything's cool? You sure? Okay. I guess it wasn't a big deal. Now I know that sounds far fetched. No, it's legitimately that simple. It's really that simple. Dogs want nothing more than to please us. Dogs mirror how we feel. Dogs mirror what it is that we want them to do and how we want them to feel. So they're going to copycat us and monkey see monkey do. Right. So if you are showing that whatever just happened scares the crap out of you and you're like, Oh my God, Oh my God, that was just, Oh my my baby, baby, you're okay. It's okay, baby. Don't you worry. You're going into this mode when you are making them realize that what just happened was bad. Right. If you go into that mode, what you just did was tell them that what just happened is a bad thing. Therefore, I'm not confident about it. I'm afraid of it. I'm nervous. I'm insecure. I'm nerve. I'm 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 unsure about it, which means you're going to feel the same way because that's what your dog is going to copycat. You. That simple. It's kind of like the equivalent of for those of you guys that have like babies, like toddlers, for example. You know, what's the one thing that if a baby or a toddler falls, what you're normally supposed to do is not freak out. Right. I mean, if you guys have experience with this, please let me know. Child falls down. What do you do? You don't do anything. It's like, come on, get up. Let's go. Move it along. Kid gets up, goes back. Not a big deal. However, if the kid falls down and you, oh my God, are you okay? And you panic, what happens to the kid? He starts to cry, if that's exactly right. Because that child is realizing that what you are communicating to them is what just happened is bad. So they're freaking out for a second going, oh my God, what just happened? But now you're saying, come on, let's go, move it along. Okay, everything's cool. But if you're freaking out, they're saying, oh my God, I'm panicking because my mom or my dad are panicking. So now there's a source of panic. There's a source of fear. So they're just gonna copycat that. Does this make sense? If I say so, me capito no me capito. Oh, that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? So your job your number one priority when it comes to having a dog that is going to be spooked by those fireworks is very, 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 very simple is don't panic. Stay calm and relaxed. If you get spooked by them, come out of it. You know, okay. Now, okay. I was afraid. Eh, Whatever. Now you have to realize that if you are legitimately fearful, but you are not Um, coming out of it, meaning you're staying fearful, you could try to pretend to your dog that everything is cool, but your dog's going to recognize that you're terrified still. So guess what? Your dog's going to copycat that. Your dog's going to be terrified too, because that's what dogs do. They feed off of our emotions. That's the bottom line. Okay. So here's the thing. There's this whole theory on what to do when it comes to, to fear, you know, you coddle, a fearful dog. Is it okay? It's okay. You pet them. You know, you give them affection. You console them. Look, 
the brain of a dog works different than the brain of a human. Okay. So a dog is afraid, nervous, fearful, tense, unsure, whatever, for whatever reason. Okay. Now, if you go in and you pet them, what did you just do? If you say you rewarded them, ding, 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 me, Vinci, Sun Prem, you. That's exactly right. That's exactly what you just did. You told them that it's okay to be fearful, nervous, tense, or whatever. Okay. And that's the difference between the brain of a dog and the brain of a child and the brain of a human or a child too, for that matter, a little child, a little, little human. Uh, so here's the thing. When we are talking, quote unquote, talking with our dog, we don't talk verbally. We talk energy. We talk motions. The way you feel is what you're communicating to your dog. And sometimes the words that come out of your mouth are not really what the dog is picking up, but the energy behind the words is what your dog is picking up on. Make sense? Facenso, make capito, make capito. Oh, so when you're dealing with the dog that's fearful, unsure, untrusting, what's happening to this situation is that this dog is afraid for whatever reason. This dog doesn't trust for whatever reason. This dog is nervous, unsure for whatever reason. So you going in and trying to bribe them with cookies, does that help? Does that build trust? Of course not, because you're bribing them to trust you. That's not going to work. It'll make work with humans. It don't work with dogs, guys. That's what's going to happen. So the key to this whole game is to understand that the way you feel is the top priority when it comes to what you're communicating with your dog and how you're communicating with your dog. If you internalize that, and it's really, it's really 95% of what, what I do for a living. That's my job is to teach people to understand first or to realize first, then to understand and then to do exactly that is to how to communicate with your dog and recognizing that that's the way to do it. But from a human perspective, that's tough because number one, it's hard to say, well, you know, I'm afraid. A lot of people can't admit to that. So like, for example, when I'm working with some clients and I'm talking to them, even just talking to like the initial conversation over the, over the phone, and I'll ask them a question like, are you afraid? And there's justifications behind it. There's excuses behind it. Well, it's not that I'm afraid. It's just that, okay? Or it's not that I'm afraid. I'm not that I'm afraid of what he's going to do. It's what I'm afraid of what the other dog is going to. Listen, the bottom line is fear is fear. Your dog doesn't know why you're afraid or nervous or whatever. They just know that that's how you're feeling. Now, if you understand the fact that dogs associate behaviors or activities with the state of mind that they are in at the moment, the way they're going to understand how to feel is you. Simple. You are teaching them how to feel about certain activities or behaviors. That's what's going to happen. So if now they're feeling unsure about fireworks and you come in with, it's okay. Are you in a confident, assertive, leader-like, powerful state of mind, energy-wise? Or are you in a weak, insecure, soft energy? So now that softness, that weakness is conveyed to them through the fireworks situation. So now fireworks equals something bad, right? Now, the other thing is when you are, telling them it's okay, when you are consoling them by giving them affection, you are trying to rationalize with your dog about why they shouldn't be afraid. But the problem with that is dogs don't rationalize. Dogs are instinctual. And until you understand that, there's not, there's not much hope. Because again, the dog training world takes dogs and they take away the essence of what a dog truly is. They take away this, all this science, all these, these people that are science-based and, and positive reinforce, reinforcement this and all this horse shit. They're taking away the essence of what a dog truly is. You know what I'm saying? And the, a dog is a dog. And, you know, a dog is instinctual. So if you want to relate to your dog, sometimes you just got to be instinct, instinctual yourself. Take your head, yourself out of the game and just use those instincts. Shut your brain down. Stop thinking and just become instinctual. Try to think, quote unquote, like a dog. You know, if you like, if you watch two dogs communicate with each other or, 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 or work with each other, they don't 
they're not ashamed when they bite another one to tell them back the fuck off of me. Let me tell you that they don't, they're not worried about it because that's what dogs do. It's just normal for them. But we rationalize. Well, you see, it's because he's just very selective of, of, the, of the dogs that are around him. No, dumbass. The reason is because you made him selective about the dogs that are around him. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't have to do specifically with that situation. It's other stuff that you created based on it. So you may be worried every single time you see a dog. Oh my God, there's another dog coming towards us. It's okay, Fluffy. Don't worry. I protect you. Be good. It's a, be a good boy. Be a good boy. I mean, come on. Do you understand what this means? Does this make sense? Vitras of Notion of does this stuff make sense? If you, know, if you guys have more questions about this, if you want to know more, please let me know because this is like really a mission that I'm taking on right now about making people understand the reality of dogs and all again all this science based all this trick or treating crap all this all this positive reinforcement it's doing absolutely nothing it's making dogs into almost like robots you know not understanding how dogs truly are you know so when when we're talking about going, i know i'm going into a tangent about that but i told you when we're going to get into this topic whew, lord help us um bafanculo to die english curse words are gonna fly too so if you got sensitive ears guys you may want to not watch that episode but um but that's how passionate i am about it is we got to treat dogs like dogs people treat dogs like children and it's so frustrating there are not children they are dogs respect their dogness god damn it respect the dogness OK, love them like children, but you got to treat them like dogs. You know, what I mean, they have different brains, different needs. Come on. <sighs> so, yeah, getting back to the fireworks situation. So, again, we're talking about fear. We're talking about it doesn't start off as fear, though. It starts off as I'm unsure. So they hear a sound. Oh, my God. What was that? OK, now the path they go on depends on us. We stay calm and relaxed. They go on that path. Right. If they go, if we go into that, it's okay. Don't worry. It's not a bad thing. It's okay, baby. Now we're petting and nurturing and reassuring uncertainty. So now fireworks equals being unsure. The next time they hear fireworks, they're going to be like, oh my God, I remember this. I was unsure at the time, but now I'm insecure about this situation. And you go into, it's okay. Don't worry. Be a good boy. Stay calm. Right. So now your dog is saying, well, I guess my mommy and my daddy want me to feel this way. They are thinking it's the right thing. I feel in the right way. OK, the next time it happens, it becomes nervousness. The next time it becomes fear. The next time it becomes anxiety. You see the pattern? Because that's what you're anchoring. Treats all that bullshit is not going to help. It's not. I mean, shit. No, you put filet mignon in front of them. It ain't going to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Use that shit to teach them some tricks. Teach them how to, how to do your taxes. That's going to work. But, well, I don't know about that. But, you know, to teach them to perform like circus tricks, the circus acts, that'll work. But to teach proper mental state, well, good behavior, I don't think so. I don't think so. And I don't care what you say. I don't care what anybody says. It does not work. Period. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So getting back to basic principles. Don't console your dog. Remember, reassuring them that it's okay verbally or giving affection does nothing more than say, communicating wise, you're, what you're saying becomes translated to it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be insecure. It's okay to be fearful. Okay. Now you got to remember because dogs want nothing more than to please us, they're going to give us more of what it is that we ask. I'll repeat that. Lo repito, pequen puitante, metetelo na na teixa, na teixa vota meter. Because dogs want nothing more than to please us, they will do everything that we want based on how we react to this. So now, if we're saying it's okay to be nervous, they're going to say, well, I'm going to be more nervous because my mommy seems to like it or want me to be nervous because they're petting me for it. They're giving me affection. That's a reward. Think about it. If you're petting your dog, you are rewarding them. 
But what you are rewarding is the state of mind that they're in at that moment. Much like if you have a dog that jumps on you and you pet them, they're not jump. You're not rewarding the jumping. Ascolta. You're not rewarding the jumping. You're rewarding the reason for the jumping. And what's the reason? Excitement. State of mind. Medda macha santissima. State of mind is what we reward or correct. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to correct fear. We have to correct nervousness. Knock it off. Don't be afraid. No, it doesn't mean that. Now, take it from a guy who has lived with fear for the majority of his life. Remember, for those of you guys that don't know, I was afraid of dogs until I was 28 years old. And I'm not talking about fear like, uh, yeah, I'm not comfortable with this dog. No, I'm talking about I would shit myself and run through the hills, even with a dog that was the size of a chihuahua. That's how terrified I was. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit of story about this as a, as a child. I mean, granted, yeah, this was as I was a, I was a kid at the time when all this when, when this when this happened. But still, it doesn't really matter because the fact of the the fact is that fear is fear. It, it makes no difference. You know what I mean? So when I was a kid, I was living in Brooklyn. I grew up in I grew up in uh, I lived in Brooklyn until I was ten years old. Then from ten years old, moved to Sicily for seven years. So I moved back to America seven years later. So I was moved to Italy when I was 10, moved back to America when I was 17. And while I was still living in Brooklyn, went to visit my grandmother with my mom. And my mom is always also terrified of dogs, which I think plays a role um, with my own fears as to why I, became, I was so fearful of dogs. But um, never be that as it may, I was going by my grandmother's house and I was with my mom. And there was a, um, I still remember this, like it just happened. There was a, it was a Jack Russell Terrier that was sitting in front of a house and there was a fence around this house and the, there was nobody watching this dog, no leash, no nothing, no tether, nothing, nothing. The dog was free and there was a fence that was around the house. And so um, the fence was not closed. There was an opening to the fence that was right in front of us. So for whatever reason, I don't know what the hell, I decided to stick my thumbs in my ears, wiggle my fingers and go blah, 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 to this dog. I was a kid. I was probably maybe like, six or seven years old, something somewhere along those lines, maybe even younger. But uh, I have to ask my mom actually how old I was, but I did, I did that. So I instigated this dog and this dog started, got up, started barking and just ran towards the opening in the fence. So my mom, who again is terrified of dogs, was and is terrified of dogs. She got in front of me with her purse, ready to whack that guy as soon as he came running up to us. But the dog was obviously well-behaved slash well-trained to respect boundaries. So as soon as he got to the edge of that fence, he stopped. Now, looking back, maybe there was an electric fence. I don't know if they had that stuff back in the day. But regardless, this dog stopped right at the edge of the fence. And of course, you know, back, back, you know, for a while in my mind, it was like, you know, all dogs are vicious. You know, that's just how it is. Never, never once did I think that it was me that kind of brought it on. So my fear was legitimized and people would always like, some people would even get pissed off that I was afraid. How can you be afraid? What's wrong with you? It's a little bitty dog. You're not going to hurt you. Come on, knock it off. Some people would try to rationalize with me. I'm not going to hurt you. Don't worry. Listen. Everything's going to be fine. He's not going to hurt you. Now, here's the thing. Do you think that that helped me in any way? The answer is no. Like if a bubby, of course it didn't. Of course it didn't help at all. Why? Because the people that would get angry with me just didn't get it. And that just made me dig my heels in deeper because I'm afraid. And you don't, you don't respect the fact that I'm afraid. Make sense? You are not respecting the fact that I'm afraid. The other part of it is now you're trying to make me not be afraid simply by telling me, look, if they were that, if, if, it, if it were that simple to not, to overcome an emotion, like a fear, then nobody would be afraid of anything. You know what I'm saying? The bottom line is that fear and security you know, uncertainty is just a lack of trust. I don't trust that situation. I don't trust that whatever it is, right? So when it comes to the fear concept and when it applies to the fireworks, you have to make your dog understand that what just occurred is not a big deal. Now, the problem is that how can you ask your dog to trust what happened if your dog doesn't trust you? Oh, me, my good meats again. Yeah, that's right. I just said it. Your dog does not trust you as the one who's going to guide them 
So you can't ask them to not be afraid of something. You know what I mean? It boils down to being an authority figure, to being your dog's leader, to being your dog's provider, for your dog to see you as the pack leader, which again, a lot of people don't understand or don't care or don't believe in or whatever. Okay. Like something basic, you know, when you have a dog, you have a dog that sits, they lay down crap, right? You teach your dog to sit. Okay. Do you know a dog or no of a dog or a person where, yeah, your dog knows how to sit, stay, come all that crap, but they won't do it when there's a distraction or they won't do it when there's no incentive, like no treat, no come. That sounded weird. Well, you know what I'm saying? Dog related. We're talking about dogs. <laughs> oh, man. I went down a whole other road with that one. Oh, boy. Anyway, so barking for balance. Like I told you, we talk about everything. Listen, if you guys are just joining, by the way, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you subscribe to our to our Barking for Balance uh, podcast on uh, Amazon on Spotify, on uh, Apple Podcasts, and on Google, and also on YouTube, because we have some fun here. But, um, and any topics, by the way, let me throw that in there. Any topics you want me to cover, guys, come on, meant to teach, inspire, entertain. You want to know about me? You want to know about dogs? What do you want to know? Tell me, throw me some topics. We'll discuss all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I love to talk about other topics that, that you guys want to hear, and not just dog-related, whatever. It could be about whether it's called sauce or gravy. Ooh, we're going to get into that topic one day soon too, by the way. Sauce or gravy. Ooh, boy. Anyway, so getting back to this situation here, the bottom line is that, and I go into tangents, so it's part of the package. You know what I'm saying? Barking for balance. Woo! So uh, listen, when it comes to fear, fear is not something that can be rationalized. And again, for me personally, no matter how much people told me, don't be afraid, it just never worked. When it comes to a dog, one of the things that I love when it comes to working with fearful dogs is making them build that trust. And the easiest way to make them build that trust is through time. Sometimes it takes less time. Sometimes it takes more time. But the one thing that I'm not going to do is I'm not going to force it. Well, how long, how much time does it take? How long time it takes, you know, how, how, how long it takes. You put a time on it. That means you're not willing to put in the time for that trust to be built. You know what I mean? So you have to start off with what I was talking about before when it comes to establishing leadership. And we were talking about like the simple commands. If your dog doesn't see you as a source of respect, a source of trust, a source of guidance, a source of direction, then how could you ask them to do something? You can't, you know, if they, if they don't see you as a source of authority, source of trust and respect, and you say, don't bite that guy when they're biting you as you walk in the house. Well, shit. Like something as basic as like jumping. We were talking about jumping before, you know, person walks in the house. Now, if you're walking the house and you let your dog jump all over you, but then you don't, you're okay with that. But then when your friend comes over, your, your, your grandmother or whatever comes over, you're saying, don't jump on them. Well, there's two problems with it. Number one is you taught your dog that whenever you, somebody walks through that rectangle, I get excited. Therefore I'm going to jump, but also you're not, positioning yourself as a source of authority, a source of respect, a source of trust. So if I could disrespect you, I'm going to respect anything you say, because you asked me to be disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? You taught me to be disrespectful. Now, again, getting back to the, the firework situation, let's summarize this for, for, for just understanding purposes. Number one, do not console your dog under any circumstances. Listen, I went through this with my own dogs personally. So what I'm about to tell you, and really anything that I tell you guys when it comes to this kind of stuff, it's not just what I read in a book, which is a lot of these dog training, science-based bullshit crap. Anyway, let me look. that's for another time. This is what I experienced personally, what I've done myself. And I've also done this with my clients. Okay. And so it's not that complicated. It's really not all these sophisticated, it's not that complicated. It boils down to staying calm and relaxed. You, you have to learn to stay calm and relaxed. That's simple. You stay calm and relaxed. And if you want to know how I, what some of the things that I do to stay calm and relaxed, I'll be more than happy to share. You know one, you know, we've discussed this on one of the podcasts. I 
I, I do archery. That's one of the things that I do to stay calm and relaxed, but there's a bunch of other stuff that I do as well. So we can, you know, be more than happy to talk about it. Meditation. We talked about that, I believe in one of our other podcast segments, epic podcast episodes. So, you know, you can say, you know, my secrets guys, you know what I'm talking about. So this is number one priority. You got to learn to be calm and relaxed first. Okay. The second thing is, and I know it's hard because the first thing is you want to do is you want to just console that poor dog. Listen, I get it. I understand. And I'm not faulting you for feeling that way. See what, I'm, see what I just said there? I'm not faulting you for feeling that way. Where I would fault you is if you take the actions from those feelings and apply them. So you have to understand that you can feel bad for your dog, but at the end of the day, you're not helping them. You're making it worse. So you're being selfish. You're letting those emotions control you and you're letting those emotions be how you deal with your dog. But unfortunately, when you do it that way, you're doing the wrong thing. I mean, I hate to say it that way, but that's the bottom line. You know, if your objective is to not make your dog afraid, then don't let that fear conquer you. Listen, again, when it comes to fear, I know fear. I know fear, you know, and I let the fear conquer me and not just with dogs. It was in other areas of my life too that I let that fear beat me and take over and dictate what I was going to do, how I was going to feel and how I was going to, how I was going to live. And that sucks. So don't let that fear conquer you and, and give it to your dog, you know, because that's just selfish. Okay. Don't give in, stay calm and relaxed and understand that your dog is feeding off is looking to you. Now I know it's hard, especially when you have a dog that's already in that fearful state, that's going to be challenging when you have a dog that's just, Oh my God. And you see them drooling. I worked with once, I worked once with a, um, with the Yorkie that came from a puppy mill. He was the, uh, the, 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 the father, the, 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 the stud, whatever he's called. And man, uh, you know, we'll get into that in another topic. And we talked about puppy mills on a previous uh, podcast episode, but this case was so sad uh, to see him. And one of the issues that he had was he was afraid of fireworks and loud noises and thunder and Lord knows what else. And of course, when I met the family, wonderful family, that's what they did. They just did what more, more normal people would do is they would try to console him because, you know, that's human emotion. Then when I taught them what to do and it, you know, it was tough at first. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, they had to be tough and sometimes they would fail and listen, it was progress, not perfection. You know, that's what we focus on. We focus on progress, not perfection. So it was never, it was not perfect right off the bat. Sometimes they would crumble. I told him the same thing. When he goes into those state in that state that he's afraid, don't pick them up and, and hold them and coddle them and kiss them and all that kind of good stuff. And like I said, at first they were had a tough time and it was back and forth and some of the family members and all this kind of stuff. And like I said, I get it. But after a while, when they stabilized and they realized what they were, what they needed to do and how it was working, they recognized how well, you know, and they would tell me this stuff. And it's like, well, you know, the dog, uh, he would, he would run away and he would hide behind the couch. Okay. And now, now he doesn't run away. He just stay by the table. And he used to, you know, drool. Now he's not drooling anymore. It was, it's a process. It's progress. It's, pro, it's a process. But remember, your dog is saying, how do I, how am I supposed to feel? Am I supposed to feel like this? And at first you, they have the habits, you know, much like us, you know, we build habits. So the more we do certain things, the more they do certain things, the more they're going to do the same thing. The key is to not give in to those, you know, to, to build, basically to build different habits, to build better habits, right? And so that's our job, build better habits. And with the right knowledge, with the right information, that's the way to do it. You know, and I know that there's going to be those, yeah, but the, you know, you need to do so you need to coddle, you need to reassure your dog. Well, if that's who you want to listen to, if that's your game plan. Good luck, have fun. And these are the people that are going to, you know, make you make your dog uh, take medication and try all these fancy things and these bones and these cookies and, and all this calming treats and all this bullshit and these coats and all this crap. And quite frankly, none of it's going to work. It's really the secret is simple, calm, relaxed human. That's really the secret. So if you guys want to know more about that, please let me know. Again, use some common sense when it comes to uh, precautions, when it comes to this. Um, guys, remember, stay calm, stay relaxed, feed that to your dog. This way your dog will be calm and relaxed. And no matter what's going on, whatever's going to be happening, bombardments of all, whatever's going on, your dog will be calm and relaxed simply because you are calm and relaxed. 
I get it. It sounds complicated. It sounds, it sounds, it sounds far-fetched. It's really that easy. It's really that simple. Don't listen to all this other horse shit. Just trust me. It's that simple. Practice. It'll benefit you just as much as it's going to benefit your dog. Believe that. Okay. If you guys want to know more, let me know. And uh, like I said, make sure that you subscribe to uh, Apple podcast and Spotify and the Google podcast and Amazon and on YouTube. So you don't miss any episodes of Barking for Balance along with our YouTube channel videos. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Barking for Balance. Have a happy 4th of July. Make sure you take care of the dogs. And remember guys, it's about training people, not training dogs. Catch you guys next time.